Hello. So I am doing the devotional this week and we are going to be talking about one of the songs that we are singing. Um, I'm going to be discussing Great Is Thy Faithfulness. Um, and this song is actually, it was written in 1923. Uh, the lyrics were written by Thomas Obadiah Chisholm and then it was set to music by William Marion Runyon. Um, it later became popularized through Moody Bible Institute and then um, that's where Billy Graham heard it and started to use it on his international missions. Uh, it did enter the public domain in 2019 so feel free to have at it. Um, but Chisholm himself suffered from ill health for most of his life and that um, not only affected how he felt, but affected his ability to provide for himself and his family. Um, and so when he wrote this, he was referencing that, but he was also drawing from the Book of Lamentations. So I'm going to talk about Lamentations a little bit today. Um, he specifically based it on Lamentations 323, but as a whole, I kind of wanted to talk about Lamentations. Um, it's not a book that you really think like, Oh wow, I should really go read Lamentations. That sounds like a great time. Um, it describes the results of the Babylonian destruction of Jerusalem. And yet, the theme of it is a belief in God's mercy and faithfulness. Um, it was written to be prayed or sung. And um, I liked the way that the study Bible referred to it as melancholy dirges for a ruined society. Uh, which I think would be either a great name for a book of poetry or an album. So somebody make that happen. Um, it is also, it's got a lot of acrostics in Hebrew. So like one stanza will start with the um, first letter of the Hebrew alphabet and then the next one and it'll go through the alphabet, which is just kind of really interesting to me. Um, and it purposefully has a certain cadence that is um, a limping sort of cadence. So it'll start with something that's maybe three phrases and then two phrases and three phrases and two phrases. So it has this sort of worn down melancholy feeling to it. Um, and interestingly enough, this song is in three, four time. So I thought that was a cool parallel. Um, but the song references chapter three and that's what I'm going to discuss. Um, a lot of chapter three talks about what the writer has been through and we don't know specifically who the writer was um, but he says I am the man who has seen affliction under the rod of his wrath and he describes all these different things that sound really terrible um, he's made my flesh and my skin waste away um, he drove into my kidneys the arrows of his quiver uh, I've become the laughing stock of all peoples the object of their taunts all day long he has made my teeth grind on gravel, if that's not some painful imagery. Um, and yet halfway through, uh, in verse 21, he says, but this I call to mind, and therefore I have hope. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. And this is the part that comes in the song. They are new every morning, great is your faithfulness. He continues, in this similar vein talking about um, how God is good to those who seek him and that it is good to wait silently for the Lord um, that he will not abandon them forever that he will return and it really ends up being a great message of hope where he had started talking about how terrible his fate was um, and he recognizes that it is not permanent and I think that's a good message to think about um, today and just a lot of other times. I know there have been times in my life where I've felt like, like, oh gosh, am I going to feel this way forever? And it's really encouraging to think about the fact that you're not. There's an end to this. There is hope available. Um, and I think this is a good way to remind ourselves of that because I, I don't think I'm ever going to experience, you know, my bones being broken and chewing on gravel and things like that um, and if God can help in that situation if there is hope in that situation there is hope for my situation um, 
And that's kind of the takeaway I took from this is that even when things seem really terrible, all is not lost. Um, God has a plan and we are lucky enough to be part of that plan. And that's a big encouragement to me because there's a lot of stuff going on right now that kind of sucks. Um, and it's easy to get discouraged. But when we remember that God is the one in control of the greater picture of things, it kind of takes off some of that um, negative edge of things. So I hope that offered you some encouragement this week. Um, yeah, that's all I got. So um, I'll just close us in some prayer and I hope you guys have a good week. Dear God, we thank you for um, the way that you are here for us and the way that you um, continue to provide us hope even in dark times. I pray that you would help us to turn to you in those times and that you would um, just be a reminder to us of the great things that you do, that you would help us to look at these situations and see how you have a plan and how you are in control of these things. Um, I pray that you would give us encouragement and give us strength this week um, and that you would just bless our efforts as we worship you. In your name we pray.